Hi, I'm Idris Goodwin, director of the Colorado Springs Fine Arts Center at Colorado College. You know, Colorado Springs is the home of many different walks of life, but certainly it has its share of artists uh, across different kinds of mediums. And in this very challenging time, uh, we feel it necessary to continue to keep in touch and try to support the arts community of our city. So with that, I've started this series of check-ins with artists. My guests on this episode are the reminders. One of the best kept secrets of Colorado is that there is a robust hip hop scene that goes back across many decades. And the reminders are one of the best exemplars of it. They embody the best tenets of hip hop's foundation, peace, love, unity, having fun, community, family, progress, the future. Are we feeling good? Are we ready to get into it? Let's get it. All right. So when I think about the reminders, the first word that comes to my mind is family. And, and I think that's the feeling you give people when they, especially when they watch you guys perform, is we as an audience, we feel like we're a part of your family too. When I think about this time, I know for myself and a lot of people, it's actually been an opportunity to, to reconnect more with family. And so how has this time been for you all? Because you guys usually roll with your family a lot anyway. Yeah, and it's actually, you know, we've been going, we've been going hard for a very long time now in our artistry and traveling and touring. We're a really busy touring band, you know what I mean? And a lot of times we, we can't always take the kids on the road. And this, this pandemic and us being indoors with the family really has, uh, has been great for us. But it's a great time to get to know who it is who lives in your house. We just got to check in with them about where they are on their personal journeys. And, and we're already a very close family. Mm -hmm. And if you could believe it, we became even closer in those moments. And I'm so proud of who my children are and so proud of who my husband is and getting to meet them and hear them through their own words, not just my own evaluations is powerful for me. You know, um, this time and what it did for you, how did it affect, has it affected your creativity in any way, your artistry in any way? I mean, were you all continuing to make more or were you, or were you kind of just really taking a hiatus from that part of it? At first, you know, everybody, there was some pressure to do live streams and to create a million albums during the time at home. It was all of that, but I felt, I felt the opposite. Initially, I was like, mm -hmm. no, nah, I'm trying to take this in and really understand what's going on. I can't just yeah. push myself to the pen and paper because the world said, said so. Since now I can slow down, let me enjoy this time at home and not make it about work, not make it about music and, and, and all of that. Um, but then from time to time, I get bursts of inspiration and just really dive in and everything would just flow. I started to reconnect with why I loved art in the first place and why I loved making music and the purpose of it when I didn't have to have any public output. I could just do it sheerly for the joy of doing it. And it felt like at this point, I've been making a lot of songs for nothing, but when I do make songs for something, I want it to be intentional. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, that's the real. Like when we were first together, I didn't have the, the confidence and the courage to, to, to be the melody. I always just wanted to be the harmony or, yeah. you know, and Samir is a person who worked diligently to create an environment for me to grow and, and gain the courage to become the melody at the times when it's my turn to be the melody. I love that you're saying that. I mean, it's really about allyship. Like, what does allyship look like, right? Like, you know, it looks like taking stock of what resources do I have and how do I leverage that so other people can shine so we can really have something equitable because that benefits me too, right? Like, if I benefit from a more equitable society, I benefit from, you know, someone else's talent being able to be uh, expressed. Our definition of allyship is creating access to resources 
so somebody can gain visibility, right? Because a mm. lot of the time, we are made to be invisible. There's something that I always say when it came to the protests and the riots, you have black people and you have youth and you have mixed populations of people standing in front of burning building, buildings and their invisibility is such that people say, oh my God, the building's on fire. And so when somebody is an ally, what you are doing is creating a space for visibility. You're making mm. people who were invisible and unheard visible and heard you know and yeah. what is being a, a musician but being visible on the stage and having your voice heard you know what i mean so we're familiar with those paths to access right your responsibility as an ally is not just to talk about something right it's about to be about something and it's mm -hmm. willing to compromise and sacrifice what you have in your two hands to split your hands apart and go like this mm -hmm. You know, I think one of the things that is really admirable about you all is that you all really rep. You guys rep the Springs, you know, like you rep your region. Talk a little bit about the role of the Springs in your life and, and how that's evolved. I've built a musical career here. We built a family here. This is home. This is the place we've lived the longest in our life. You know what I mean? Like, so it's a, it's a beautiful community that, that has supported us from the beginning. You know, we were, we were given awards. If we have a show, it sells out. You know, we're really thankful for that kind of support. People call and check on us. Mm -hmm. the, you know, it's like, Springs is dope. Springs is, is really amazing. And, and we definitely don't take it for granted. Like, there's some mornings we wake up and we look out and look at the mountains and it's like, wow, this is really postcard scenery, you know. Yeah. And some people some people would do whatever they could to be in this kind of place. Yeah, and it's yeah. been interesting for us because when we go to L.A. and New York, and we mentioned we're from Springs, people want to know how we made a career staying in Colorado yeah. Springs the whole time. Yeah. And we've invested into this community. You know, some people, when they walk, things happen. Some people, when they speak, things happen. You know what I mean? And we've been put into a position now where our speech has become our form of action. That's, that's real. There's no right one right way to go about, you know, do, doing your service on this planet, right? And really, you don't know what people are they're doing or not doing. And, and you don't know what people are dealing with. There's some people who have seen and dealt with brutality and all that for years and decades and who are not up to handling it right now. Like, you know, there's times where I'm like, I can't even go on social media. I can't see any more of this. When it first happened, people were like, I was getting calls like, yo, it should be, we should do this song. You should write about this. I'm like, bro, have you seen our career? Have you listened to our music the past 15 Thanks. years? You know what I mean? And, and so the, the, some of us are like, yo, man, let me just, let me just sit back for a second. You know, and he said, it's crazy that people have been listening to my music for so long and they still didn't hear it was, me. It was it's right, exactly. They still didn't exactly. hear me. Because so many people are new to the conversation, so they over they overdo it. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's times where I'm like, yeah. yo, it's B, only new to you. Like you've been out here. To, to the point where, you know, it was it's been yeah, exactly. on our front door. And now some people finally get to see it on TV. They still just get to see it on the screen. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and now it's hitting home. Like, yeah, man, yeah. well. Told you about it, like I told you when it was when it happened to my cousin. I told you when it happened, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Out of desperation, had to roll together. Brought the fam along because we so much stronger when we move as a unit. Powerful movement, fearless and can't be stopped at the moment. The time is now. Place is here. Love in the air, keep the message clear. Trouble on my mind, I refuse to lose. Living in serious time, don't get it confused. We may laugh and joke, but got work to do. These conditions, we live in unacceptable. Let's build our own and get organized. Tired of watching so many of my brothers cry. Cause we can't get ahead, struggle to survive. Going on too long, we need that drive to make a difference for the elders and the children so we can start living the kids are pissed the words that we use and the things that we're slang the, the, if you said that in front of kids now they have accepted each other in ways that we didn't have the capacity to mm -hmm. and what people are seeing is the result of the vitri the anger mm -hmm. of youth that have been miseducated right and and segregated that's what mm -hmm. you're seeing when they're recognizing mm -hmm that that has no place in the world that belongs to them. Khalil Gibran said, your children live in the houses of tomorrow that you could never visit, not even in your dreams. Yeah, it's really inspiring. It's the thing that gives me a lot of hope. It gives me a lot of hope seeing them. Cause I'm, cause I'm like, like what you're saying, man. And Chappelle just said this in his last special. He's like, haven't I been saying these things? <laughs> like, you know, it's like- You gotta have the elders to, for that guidance cause they've done it before. But then you bring the youth in because they know how to maneuver these times. They have the energy. You know what they say about us? Once we turn 30, we get tired. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> you're a lot I'm, trying to you're that, man. I'm trying to change that they narrative. Say, they, you, know, you know, and for us, that's not true at all because yeah. we've been running. Well, listen, y'all. Um, this has been an awesome lightning round. I'm going to ask you just my final lightning round question. I will pose it like a question, like in your voice, right? So my favorite place to go in Colorado when I need inspiration is? Sand dunes. Sand dunes, yeah. Uh, my favorite instrument to play right now is? Cajon. Ableton Push. That's a dope band right there. Just Cajon and Ableton <laughs> Push. Like, that's hot. <laughs> the last song that was stuck in my head was? Um, Imidi Wan Nakaleen by Tanari Wynn. Uh, Sacrifices by uh, The Dreamville. It's like J.I.D. We are the reminders and we are wonderful. <laughs> Go ahead. Ready. Yeah, yeah, that's what's up. You are ready. All right, well, thank you y'all so much. Uh, continue peace and blessings. I'm so excited to be back in the same city as y'all. And I look forward to us doing more things together um, in the city at the Fine Arts Center. You we know. miss y'all and we'll be glad to have you guys back here. Big up, big up. All right, y'all. Be well. Right, Appreciate y'all. Stay up, stay up. Peace.